So I would like to ask you the first uh, thing. Uh, what is an airport? If you can give me the idea of what is an airport. Uh, like uh, airport is a major place where uh, 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 um, the the operations which are all included uh, with air will happen there um, with air transport the what are all the operations have to be taken care in air transport uh, where the place uh, um, everything at one everything is uh, held at a one place uh, called airport my <laughs> like a uh, uh, runway etc um, terminal uh, um, parking bay taxi bay and etc example okay. So the entire fenced area that yeah. that is all security uh, related. Okay. Now uh, I would like to ask you, what is a terminal building? Since you have mentioned the terminal building in the airport area, what is a terminal building? What happens? Uh, there? Like a terminal building is a, a place where uh, um, a basic in uh, basic uh, kind of uh, checks uh, have been done there uh, for uh, the passenger. Like uh, where, uh, like um, uh, um, like uh, uh, like without security, like uh, without security reasons, we can't able to get into the aircraft. So every kind of uh, like a uh, uh, security basis will be happening there, and uh, um, and uh, the boarding will be happening. Um, so that means passengers come for uh, uh, from a, a place, yeah, from a place. Uh, while passenger traveling from one place to another place, they can't able to travel without uh, like uh, uh, the policies and uh, restrictions of uh, 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 like uh, a particular country. So uh, the uh, so a country which has uh, like uh, uh, like uh, um, maintaining the policies uh, of their uh, particular uh, like uh, of their country uh, instructions uh, like they have to follow uh, the airport which is in their country uh, sorry the uh, the airport uh, in that the terminal building which is in that uh, place have to follow that uh, policies and the instructions of the country to make a person he or she to fly uh, like uh, my question is my question is yeah. what is terminal building what happens in the terminal building so uh, terminal building is the area where passengers they come they check in check out yeah, right check in. yeah yeah they they check in for the flight they yes. pass through the immigration then mm -hmm. they are uh, and that is used for embarking disembarking passengers all these things happen at the terminal building that is all that happens transit everything okay now that is the part of the airport and that's the reason I want you to know that what happens in the terminal building and that is crucial. Okay. Because most of the time even cabin crew also pass through the, air, uh, the terminal building within the airport. Area. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, what is what is a cabin crew or what is a cabin attendant? Yesterday the definition which I have told you accordingly, please let me know and it has to be in one sentence. Cabin so what is, uh, attendant. Uh, like uh, a cabin crew or a cabin attendant is a person who serves and uh, who serve the passengers. Mm. What was the uh, first on prime duty of the cabin attendant which I have told you? Mm. Uh, to ensure the safety of the passengers. Exactly. Safety of the passengers and the aircraft. So that is the foremost thing. So cabin attendant is one who ensures the safety of the passengers of the aircraft yeah. and serves the passengers. That's yeah. it. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Now uh, let's move on to some other definitions. Like, uh, what is the full form of or what is DTC? DTC. DTC. DGCO. DGC, Director General of Civil Aviation. Like okay. for India, it is uh, followed through DGCA, and uh, for other countries, it will be varying with their. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, for the, a respective one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. DGC is the regulatory body in yeah. India, which India. actually looks after the entire uh, aviation, uh, uh, you know, the registration certificate, and they give the uh, clearance yes. for the aircrafts to fly, registered, and all these things. Uh, DGCA does. Yeah. Now, if I talk about what is IATA, give me the full form of IATA and where's the headquarters? Uh, IATA. Yes. International Airport General um, Aviation. <laughs> so, International Sorry. International Air Transport oh. Association. Oh, association, sorry. You know, see, uh, Dinesh, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. In case, uh, for example, when I am teaching you, in case if you want to go ahead and take the uh, screenshot okay. of the screen which I'm showing you, it will be good and uh, you know, it will be very good for you to you know, memorize and then go through it because the next day I'm going to ask you all these things. Okay. Okay, so IATA is International Air Transport Association. And when okay. is it, where is its headquarters? Located? It's in uh, uh, Canada. Canada, where in Canada? Greenville. Montreal. It's oh, in Montreal. Montreal. Always okay. remember, okay? Okay, sure. And then, what is the full form of ICAO, I-C-A-O, and what does it do? International Civil Aviation Organization. Very good. And uh, its headquarters are in? Uh, it's two in Canada. Very good. And which place in Canada? Uh, same you told the country name. Uh, uh, I can't able to get this. Montreal. And, oh, Montreal. Montreal. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So, uh, ICAO, and uh, what does it do? Any idea uh, about that? Like uh, it is a regulatory body which operates uh, all over the world uh, exactly. to follow the rules and regulations uh, uh, through which uh, like uh, uh, that every country to follow that uh, rules and regulations to operate their air transport. It governs the entire aviation, mm -hmm. aviation industry in the world. Okay. Very good. So now um, as can you see the screen right in front of you? What is there on the screen? Oh yeah, aviation phonetics. Okay. Phonetics. Okay. 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 So please uh, go ahead uh, and tell me uh, from uh, A to Z entire. As I told you that you, I will ask you. So please go ahead with that. It's okay. I'll help you in case if you uh, stumble somewhere. But anyways, you need to know this. A for alpha, B for beta, uh, C for sera, beta. No, I, this is the one which I told you yesterday is according to the aviation uh, terminology, yeah. aviation rules. So this is how the phonetics go on when we are talking about the aviation. So this is the phonetics which I've given you. It's not just the pilot or the dispatchers or the air traffic controllers. Even the cabin yeah. also use the same phonetics. <clears throat> okay. Um, alpha, beta, sera. Oh, sorry, sorry. Alpha, bravo, sera, uh, delta. Alpha, delta, bravo, sera. Delta, uh, D for. It's A for alpha, B, B for, for bravo, bravo, C, C for, for Charlie. 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 Okay. okay, D for Delta, and then after that, E for Echo. Echo. Okay. Echo. F for Foxtrot. Foxtrot. G for Ball. G for Golf. Yes, remember that. H for Golf. Hotel. Hotel, okay. I for? Mm. What is the name of our country? India. Yes, I so India. I for India. Okay. J for uh, J for Juliet. Juliet, yes, yes, yes. K for K for uh, Kelvin. Kilo. Kilo. Okay. Kilo. L Kilo. for Lima. 
Lina. M for Mike. Mike. And for yes, uh, M for Mike. And that's M why you know today now when I'm going to show the screen, take a screenshot of it, and tomorrow okay. again I'll ask you the same question. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm sure you're showing you this uh, screen, and you take the screenshot of it, so that you do not forget. And once you are done, let me know. Yeah, okay. I'm done. Done? Hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. And for now, okay. so this is all. Uh, um, okay. So now, let's move ahead. Can you? What do you see on the screen right now? Aerodynamics. Okay, aerodynamics. Have you heard of this uh, uh, this term before? Yes, yes. What do you mean? Uh, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Um, uh, aerodynamics. Uh, aerodynamics. Yeah, aerodynamics. It is a way that which the air transport moves in air. Like uh, it is a part which controls the air. Uh, it controls the aircraft control moment through which it is takes place. Okay, this is the way uh, the like, air yeah. moves around things. Mm. That is like uh, it has uh, four forces, uh, like uh, lift, drag, uh, yes, and uh, lift and drag, and uh, center of gravity. Oh, sorry. I it's okay. Uh, we will. It's okay. Don't. Uh, I just wanted to know that if you know the meaning of this word aerodynamics. Okay. Rest, we will. Uh, we will talk about it. So it is mm -hmm. the way air moves around things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the rule explains that how an aircraft flies. The four forces of flight we'll talk about, and then the airfoil. Airfoil is one of the structure of the wing, which is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, important to know for the cabin crew that how the aircraft flies. So now let's move on. An aircraft is taken forward and rise in the air by four forces acting on the flight. Okay? And what are those four forces which act on the aircraft? The first one is weight. It is caused by the gravity pulling down. And we have all uh, studied in physics that this is how the gravity works. It pulls down the things, right? So the weight, then the lift. Lift is going to lift. So it is the upward movement of an aircraft produced by wings. Wings is necessary, otherwise the aircraft can't fly. So wings is being built with the aircraft in order to make it fly. So it is the upward movement of the aircraft. Drag, it limits the speed of an airplane. There should always be an opposite force uh, to everything so that it can uh, keep the thing in balance. And that's the reason why drag will act on the speed of the airplane. So it limits the speed of the airplane. Most of the time it happens because everything needs balance. Yes. Thrust. Thrust. The push that moves the airplane forward produced by engine. Engines. Okay. When the engine moves, it produces that force. It you know throws that thrust, and that's the thrust. It pushes the move. It, uh, the push that moves the airplane forward produced by engines. So these are the four forces which act on the aircraft. So what is an airfoil? It's a structure with different curvatures, which allow the air pass below and below and above it. So this is uh, the uh, structure of the wing, actually. Yeah. When you see at the edge of the wing, the, the entire end, and that is the uh, yeah, structure like, which the has... The air moves upward and downward, so it pushes the, the air, pushes the ground, to, so that uh, the aircraft will move forward. Like uh, when the engine runs, the air gets into and pushes through the wing, so that uh, it will be uh, getting the because of thrust uh, and the push, the lift will be exactly. taken Very good. Very good. So now, do uh, you see this, uh, the structure of the wing, like, you know, the wing, the airfoil which we were talking about, if you can see that yeah. on the screen, yeah, this one right? Yes. The airplane is moving in this direction. Now there's the lift created up. How is being created? How the lift is being created? So when the aircraft moves, you know the wing, when the air, which or definitely the air will uh, be affecting the airplane. 
So the air which is moving upward will have the low pressure. Why? Because there is a curvature out there. Okay, it will go like this. So it will take uh, the fast air will move, but it will be with low pressure. But what about the air which is moving? You know, at the uh, bottom of the wing, that is the air, slower air, but it produces high pressure. Why? Because they are, there is no curvature, nothing like that. They are just, uh, you know, uh, going in a straight direction. So definitely there will be a lift because of the high pressure down. So the lift will be created and due to which the aircraft is lifted and it flies. Yes, yes. Okay. You understood? Yeah, okay, let's move on. Yeah. Now, these are the four forces. If you can see the aircraft, hmm. uh, the lift is created, which I've already told you. The lift goes up, the weight will pull down, yeah. the drag will pull back, and the thrust will take the plane forward. So, I have listed <coughs> this the flight condition where it says lift is Big. greater than weight, right? Yeah. Hmm. Then the plane will rise. Obviously, when the lift will be greater than weight, then only the plane will rise. Yeah. If the weight is greater than lift, then the plane will fall. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let tell me one thing: when the weight uh, is greater than lift, at what point of the flight the weight is greater than lift? Can you? When can the you... Okay. Okay, I'll I'll show you. When the lift is greater than weight, then the aircraft yeah. takes off, right? Yeah. It rises in the air, hmm. it flies. Now, there are different uh, flights, uh, you know, different uh, stages of flight in the air. First, there is a uh, stage of flight of taxi, moving the aircraft. Yeah. Yes, okay. okay. The another stage, it's take off. After runway, it takes off. Hmm. It takes off. Yeah. That's the second stage. Then it climbs. That is ascending. That's the third stage. Okay. Now, after it climbs, it comes to a uh, you know at a stable position in the in the air. Yeah, that yeah. is cruise. Okay. That is cruise. Remember that. Okay. Hmm. So the, now the aircraft is moving and the flight is going and it's stable. Now it's time to land. Now the now the flight uh, flying time is uh, you know destination is approaching and it's time to land. Now it will descend. descend. So that's the another next stage. Okay. Okay. And after descend, what happens? Captain sees the runway. So it appears approaching towards the runway. That's the next stage again. After descent. It is approaching towards the particular runway which is being designated and given to the pilot that you are going to land on that runway number. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so that's approach, and the last stage is touchdown on the ground. The moment it touched down the aircraft. Okay. So these are the different stages of flight. Hmm. So when I'm talking about that, when the lift is greater than weight, the plane rises. Hmm. The plane takes off. Hmm. Now, if the weight is greater than lift, what will the happen at what? Sorry? The plane descends, right? Exactly. The plane, descends. the plane starts to descend. Very good. Because the plane starts to fall. Because now it is making a, uh, an approach to land towards oh. its destination. Okay. Now, drag, if, it is, <clears> if the drag is greater than thrust, then the plane slows. It is not moving fast. Because uh, remember yesterday we talked, we spoke about headwind and tailwind. Oh yeah, you should be. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Ah. Headwind and tailwind. So yesterday, yes, we spoke like, about headwind and tailwind. Headwind is something which actually, uh, yeah, you know, uh, makes the planes. Yes. Yeah, Tell like me. acts uh, directly to the aircraft nose, and the tailwind will uh, act uh, in. Uh, backwards of the aircraft stage. It pushes the plane. Yeah. It pushes the plane. Why? Because it is going uh, towards the goes in the same line with the uh, aircraft and it pushes the plane. Headwind is like plane is uh, coming this way, headwind is like this. Mm, yeah. Opposite. But mm. it is parallel, however it is opposite. Okay. But the tailwind, the plane is flying like this, the tail, the tailwind is coming from here and it is parallel 
but it is pushing away. Why? Because it is from the back. Okay. Right? So now, so when the drag is greater than thrust, the plane slows down. Why? Okay. Because drag is dragging the plane. Dragging the plane. Okay. Right? And when the thrust is greater than drag, then the plane accelerates, it fastens, okay. it moves okay. faster. Yeah. Is, is that okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. See, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to tell you from now, tomorrow, if I'm going to ask you all these small okay. little things. If you have any, uh, uh, you know, if you want to go through it, please take the screenshot of the screen okay. in case if you really, uh, because I'm going to ask you all these things, because it is very crucial for an aircraft. A cabin crew okay. must know that how an aircraft, a basic knowledge, okay. not the depth knowledge, how the dispatchers know, how the pilots know. But the basic knowledge is required. Okay. 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 Now, we have, we will talk about the parts of an aircraft. Okay. Um, do you see that on the screen that there are different labelings done on the aircraft? Yes, ma'am. Please take a screenshot of the screen also because uh, I will ask you this as well tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Because I, I, I told you, right, the technical part, uh, there are many, uh, there are some important, because I, I, I'm teaching you the important things which uh, Cabinet needs to know. And that's the reason why I'm emphasizing on this. Okay. Now, do you see that? Uh, do you see the body? Mm. Can you see my cursor moving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I can see. You see that cursor? Okay. Yes, yes. So, so now, uh, this is... Yes, fuse latch. Exactly. Fuse. This is the... This is the fuse latch, right? Just a okay. second. Okay. This this body is the fuse latch, right? Yes. Fuse latch is the structure where yes. it carries uh, the passengers. Is passengers, it? Passengers. Sometimes the entire. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, like car goes to. Exactly. Yes. This is this happens with the cargo plane, which they carry cargo. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Now. This is the nose of the aircraft, oh. this entire section. And okay. and these windows which you see, this is for the cockpit. Okay. So this is the cockpit window. Either we call it as cockpit or flight deck. Okay. Because it's the house of the flight uh, crew. Flight crew are uh, being uh, referred to the captain as well as the first officer. Okay? So okay. this is the flight deck. Then we move down to the wings, the wing part. The entire wing part. Wing. And when we are uh, when we are talking about the wing section, we will also see the jet engine, which produces oh. thrust. Hmm. That is also attached under the wing, right? So this is the jet engine which generate thrust. Okay. Then we talk about this wing. Let's come down to the wing. Wing obviously generate lift because wing is required to help for an aircraft to fly, right? Hmm. So now what are the parts of the wing here? See? Flaps. They, yeah, flaps. In flaps are situated. Now this is also very uh, necessary, the location and the, uh, the how, I mean, what is the function of the particular uh, part of that wing? So mm -hmm. if the flap is here, the flap, uh, as you can see the flap, flap okay. is situated at the inner side of the outer edge of the aircraft. Okay. 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 Like, like, like it is the outer, the, the back part of the wing, the wing front part is this, right? Mm. And the back part is this, right? Mm. So it is situated on the inner, uh, inner side of the okay. back part. And that is the flaps. And change the lift and drag. It helps in yeah. lift and drag. Mm. Then comes the ailerons. Ailerons next to the flaps towards the outer side of the back part of the wing and that is aileron which actually works for the roll Rolling. like if okay. you rotate the body of the aircraft yes, like okay. towards oh. this and then okay, roll oh. of the aircraft. Okay. okay then comes the spoiler which you see it is situated right above those flaps and uh, aileron yeah. uh, quite in the middle and what mm. does this do? It applies brakes, I would say. Change mm. it to the lift and drag, it rotate the body, but it applies brakes. Okay. It gives the brake to the aircraft. Mm. Then there is slat. Slat is always on the leading edge of the wing. Leading edge, okay. 
towards the front of the body. Mm. And this is slats of chain. It also helps in the lift. Yes, okay. okay. Because see, wing is mostly for the lift. So definitely the parts which are associated with the wing will actually help towards or work towards the main goal and that is generating lift. So all these parts work towards generating lift. lift. Okay. Now, now we will move down towards the uh, rear part of the aircraft, which is the tail section of the aircraft. Can you see my cursor moving? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is the tail section of the aircraft. Now they also have different parts. The tail has different parts. Do you see this vertical up there? Yeah. This, this is the rudder. Mm. This is the rudder. And this we call it as a vertical stabilizer. The vertical stand. Stabilizer. Yes. Okay. Because it stabilizes the aircraft. This is what mm. the use of the tail section is. It stabilizes the aircraft. How does it vertically it stabilizes the aircraft? So uh, the part which is there in the uh, vertical stabilizer is rudder. Rudder it changes okay. the yaw, side to side movement. Mm. Side to side movement. So it, yeah. it actually balances that. Balance. Okay. Then the other part is the horizontal stabilizer. Horizontal stabilizer. Because it is horizontal <clears throat> in shape mm. of the tail. So it is horizontal stabilizer and it controls the pitch, the nose up and down movement of the aircraft. Yeah, how, yeah. how does uh, to lift up and, and down? Uh, yeah. To lift and land. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. So it it also it works towards the pitch up and down movement of the aircraft. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I hope you have understood this. And uh, I believe that you must uh, take a quick shot of this uh, screen so that tomorrow yeah. when I ask you the functions of all this, I'm, I'm telling you very, very uh, clearly why because this is really very important and it comes in the exam whenever you will go for the cabin crew, uh, you're selected as a cabin crew and there will be uh, training in every exam. This, I mean, in all the exams, this is going to come. This is the basic knowledge which every cabin crew must have. Okay. Okay. okay, and uh, you you must have an idea that when cabin crew mm. are selected, they undergo for like uh, some airline goes for three months training, some airline goes for one and a half months training, some goes yeah, for two months like training. Heard of that, uh, yes. They will be giving so, uh, swimming training and uh, like first aid training and all right. Um, Which airline gives the swimming training? I don't know. Uh, like uh, I don't know. Like it's uh, like uh, not uh, airlines. Like it's uh, it's a uh, cabin crew colleges. Uh, like in Chennai, uh, there were Remo International College was in there. So I think the like uh, here they will give. Uh, it is a six months. Oh uh, sorry, uh, three months of course. Like in that, uh, they will be giving swimming training and. Uh, and some uh, like I don't know, like exactly I don't okay. know. Uh, okay. Like so I heard means... of that. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, but uh, the cabin crew will have to know uh, swimming, right? Well, cabin crew is the uh, requirement by some of the airlines to know swimming for cabin crew, but it is not mandatory. Okay. There are many airlines in the Middle East and Gulf country who do not ask for swimming at all. But there are very few airlines, even in the Middle East and uh, different parts of the world, where they ask for swimming. Like if I talk about the airlines in India, they never ask mm. for swimming. There is no eligibility oh. criteria um, as a swimming in their, um, in their, you know, in their points. Uh, swimming is not required for Indian airlines. Okay. Okay. Be it Mustara, be it Indigo, be it uh, Air Asia, anything, it is not required. So. That's why some airlines they go for the swimming part, some airlines. However, swimming is a skill which everybody must know. And it's a good exercise for the entire whole body exercise also yeah. in the water. So it's a good, good skill. In obviously, if you want to go ahead and learn swimming, why not? Please go ahead because you never know that which airline you will apply and they will have the eligibility criteria. And this swimming can also be a part of it. So it's better you learn swimming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's move ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, we talk about the primary. Yes. Hello. Oh, one yes. second. Okay. One second. 
हेलो 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 वन सेकंड यस या कैन यू ओके यस आई कैन हियर यू इट्स क्लियर लो ओके शो सॉरी मां लाइक व्हाई रोज डिस्कनेक्ट ओके ओके कैन यू सी माय स्क्रीन या प्राइमरी कंट्रोल यस सो what are the primary controls in an aircraft uh, ailerons which i have just shown you in the diagram ailerons is located on the outer edge of the trailing edge of the wing now what is the meaning of the trailing edge trail back rear behind hmm. that's what trailing edge means so you have seen the wing has two parts the front part and the the front edge and the uh, uh, the back edge so now the back edge in aviation terms we call it as trailing edge trailing okay edge. so located on the outer edge of the trailing edge of the wing so because the ailerons were on the outer side of the wing hmm remember yeah. first was the flaps was that was on the inner side then was the ailerons was the outer side so outer yeah. side of the back of the wing part which is the trailing edge of the wing there were one on each wing because on the other side of the wing also it's the same one and here also one so one on each wing so the total there are two ailerons in the wing okay Okay. Helps in rolling and banking. That's the function of the ailerons. It rolls and bank. Bank, bank. is like uh, making a turn or like that. No, a so straight it, turn, uh, like a, a straight turn. Uh, aircraft is like straight turn. Right? It is very different. Yeah, towards to the banking of the aircraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can. Rolling and banking of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Then movement is toward is around the longitudinal axis. There, you know, there are three axes. on which the aircraft moves longitudinal lateral and vertical axis now this aileron it actually movement is towards the longitudinal axis and this one uh, you just need to remember and this is uh, uh, something which you just have to imagine and i will show that i will show that in the next okay. diagram okay now let's uh, move on to the elevators elevators is the second primary control elevators is located on the horizontal stabilizer sorry horizontal stabilizer this one remember where is this horizontal stabilizer located uh, tail uh, tail tail section yeah. tail section of the aircraft yeah. and one thing i would like to tell you that the entire tail section of the aircraft is known as empennage like how the uh, body of the airplane when uh, is known as the fuselage okay exactly the same way the tail section of the aircraft is known as empennage 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 and i think we will we will study about it hmm. so okay. empennage so now the horizontal it is uh, located in the horizontal stabilizer and remember when there is a horizontal stabilizer we are talking about there is one on this side and one on this side remember so there are two in number Hmm. There we go. Shall I show you the diagram again so that we can? No, no. Yeah, I can uh, understand. Remember? Yeah. See? Yeah, yeah. Okay. One, two. A two. Okay. Okay. Mm, elevators. This is for and pitching control. Yes, it helps in the pitching of the aircraft, moves up and down movement, and yeah. the movement is around the lateral axis. Lateral axis. Okay. Lateral axis. Now let's move on to the third primary control, which is rudder. Radar, you remember, it is located on the vertical stabilizer of the engine launch. Hmm. The tail it's section, all, yeah, and yeah. it's one in number. There's no two. There's only one. One. Okay. Because there's only one vertical stabilizer. It helps in yawing the aircraft. Yeah. yeah. Like oscillation of the aircraft. Yeah, yeah. I can. Okay. And the movement is around the vertical axis. Vertical axis. Okay. Yes. So now. Uh, uh, This is the diagram which I wanted to show you. See this? If you can see my cursor moving, you see yeah. this. This is the longitudinal axis. Okay. It's the lateral stability, the aileron board, which I told you that aileron moves towards the longitudinal axis. Okay. Remember now the elevator, which helps in the pitch, it moves towards the lateral axis. Lateral axis. Okay. And the rudder, which helps in yaw movement, it helps uh, works towards the vertical axis. Okay. And this is what it is mentioned here completely. Primary control surface. If you want to take the screenshot, you may go ahead. A uh, primary okay. control surface, aileron. The movement is roll, and the axis of rotation is longitudinal. Then the type of stability is lateral stability. The stable, uh, we make the airplane stable towards the lateral. Exactly the same way, elevator. 
uh, it uh, the movement is uh, the pitch, the function is pitch, and then the axis of rotation is lateral, and the type of stability is longitudinal. The same way goes with the rudder. The movement is long. The rotation is towards the vertical axis, and the type of stability is directional. So it gives almost with the direction because it's oscillation type of thing. So I hope you have understood the diagram. Any doubt no. in it? Please do no. ask. Me. No. Okay. Now we'll uh, talk about the secondary controls. Secondary controls, we have spoilers. As I've already told you, uh, I've shown you in the diagram the spoilers, which is right above or right yeah, yeah. Uh, ahead of it. So those spoilers, they used to cut the airflow. Cut the airflow, in other words, you can say, yes, yeah, slow down the aircraft, reduce the speed of the aircraft. Kind of it gives brakes, like how we give the brake in the car, mm. slow down the speed of the car, exactly the same way. Okay. Now we talk about flaps and slats. I have shown you the flaps and slats also. Where is the flap located? Trailing the, edge. Yes. And the trailing edge on the inner side. Like inner this one. Okay. Yes. Inner side. Okay. 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 Yes. Inner side. Okay. So flaps are found on the trailing edge. Slats are found on the leading edge of the Leading edge of the okay. Remember? Now, uh, the flaps and slats, they both help in generating the lift and reducing the speed to facilitate takeoff and landing. So these two parts of the wing, they actually balance the movement of the aircraft. They help in generating the lift, and they help in, they actually uh, lift, uh, facilitate the takeoff also by uh, generating the lift, and they also reduce the speed of the aircraft in order to make the aircraft land properly. Okay. Understood? Okay. Yeah, now, we talk about the navigational lights. Now, what do you mean by the word navigation? Can you please tell me? Navigational, like uh, it will navigate uh, transport to a particular place, which uh, to a particular destination. So it will show the direction. Yeah, the direction. Exactly, helps in the direction. So now, uh, what are the navigation uh, lights on the aircraft? There is a red on the port side, port and starboard. Yeah, Please? I know that. Uh, oh, like, you know uh, that. Okay. Yeah, it in left it was port and in right it was starboard. Port oh. is a pilot and starboard is in co-pilot. Very good, very good. Co-pilot like the first officer. Very good. Okay. So red on the port side. So there is a red light on the port side and there is a green light on the starboard side. Starboard side. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Remember that. And this is this is towards the wing. When I'm talking about these yeah, are the lights like, on the. Uh, yeah, when we see uh, below, uh, like behind the aircraft, uh, it will be in left and right. When we see, uh, when we are in the, when we behind the aircraft and see, uh, left is port and uh, right is airport. Uh, starboard, sorry. When we in the front of the aircraft and see, uh, like it will be right is port and uh, left is starboard. Uh, How are you actually? Uh, <laughs> Uh, when we are uh, seeing inside the aircraft, uh, like uh, when okay. we are in that. So you are you are trying to say that your left and right, but uh, the uh, aircraft's yeah, yeah. left and right is not going to change. Yeah, no, no, no. But when we are in uh, like when uh, when we are in the different direction, the port and right port directions will be changing to our side. Right? Oh, that's what. Okay. Yes, yes. Obviously, when we are standing, see, we humans, uh, whatever uh, thing we face. We will mm -hmm. take it according to our left and right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In order to understand. Yes. That's okay. it. However, yeah. the left and right or the port or the starboard side of the aircraft mm -hmm. will not change because the light will remain on the same thing. The red yeah. on the port side of the aircraft of the and aircraft. green on the starboard side. Starboard of side of the aircraft. Okay. Exactly. So now we talk about the strobe lights that is next to the red and green. Red and green lights, which we just spoke about. There is one strobe light which is right next to those two lights. Okay. That is also one of the navigation lights which is on on the aircraft during the flight. Hmm. When you see when I when I talk about the flight, do you understand what is the meaning of the flight? The aircraft took off and it is in the air till it lands. If that is the end, that entire movement is the flight. Hmm. Okay, so the strobe light. lights, exactly. White light is also there on the tail. Right on the tail above the exhaust and the winters. Okay. There is a small exhaust engine, uh, or, or I would say, uh, um, uh, yes, there's a, there's a small engine right uh, 
down the uh, tail section. So above that, you will see a one on the tail, which is right above the exhaust and on the wing tips also. Wing tips, then you will see the white lines. And I'll show you right here mm -hmm. on the gap diagram. So together they give the direction and dimension of the aircraft. So this is the use of the navigation lights. They help in the direction and the dimension of the aircraft. Which okay. direction they are. So let's go ahead. See. You see this? Yes, okay. This is the green, this is the red, red. the navigation lights, and these are the strobe lights right behind. Right, white and white. Okay. White here. Okay. And, and the white light on the tail section, which I was telling you, is this. Okay. okay. Now, uh, the anti collision light, you can see right now on the screen. Do you see the anti collision lights? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, so you see those red light blinking right okay. above the air, you know, at yeah. the top of the aircraft and one at the bottom of the aircraft. They are often known as rotating vehicle. And whenever you will see an aircraft in the air, you will see a red light blinking, which actually gives the uh, you know sign that there is an aircraft in the air which is flying. Or smoke, you uh, there's a red light blinking like that, yeah, flashing yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So this is the anti-collision lights. Anti-collision light. Why do we call it as anti-collision light? Any idea about it? Like uh, whenever uh, like uh, another aircraft comes in a direct contact to a particular aircraft, when mm -hmm. When each aircraft or in uh, direct contact uh, to avoid uh, the collision, uh, the anti collision lights. Uh, Very good. To avoid yeah. so the that, collision uh, with the other aircraft. Yeah. So that uh, the, the, the aircraft coming in the direct point of contact will uh, get an uh, like notification yes. so that uh, it will uh, descend over altitude, descend over ascent. Then, uh, yes. Given it will... It will actually help in uh, not uh, like uh, giving the signal uh, to yeah. the aircraft that there is an aircraft coming yeah. and uh, we must be careful while going yeah. into that spark of okay. Huge. Okay? okay. Now, let's move on. This is a little bit, uh, this was one of the Scandinavian airlines where I have actually taken a picture just to show you that this is how most of the lights are there. See, the red anti-collision light right yeah. at the belly of the aircraft. <clears throat> then there is this one at the top of the aircraft. Okay. Then, then we have this uh, red position light green on the opposite wing. It's the wing, the small wing. See, and then this is the strobe light. I hope you got get it. In case if you yeah. haven't get it, please let me know. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is the white position light there. And uh, I remember I told you right above the exhaust. See where my cursor is moving. Right above the exhaust, there is this white light. Okay. This is the white strobe light, which I was talking about. Okay. 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 Now, aircraft uh, pressurization we will talk about. And how does it work? There is a video on it. I'll show you that as well. But before that, we will just go to the pressurization terminology. Aircraft is all about the art of pressurization to which the aircraft uh, um, is being stable in the air and we maintain the cabin pressure in, in the aircraft. Okay. Mm. So uh, first is height. Height we all know, but what the definition, the exact definition of the height is vertical distance of a level or a point or an object measured from a specified point. For example, this is one point and this is another point. So now this is the height. Got it? Yeah. Altitude is different. <clears throat> Altitude is something that a vertical distance of a level or point or an object measured from the mean sea level. Mean sea. Okay. Exactly the same way when the aircraft is flying, at what altitude it is, is it flying? It is measured from the mean sea level. Mean sea level. Sometimes 30,000 feet, sometimes 25,000 feet, sometimes 40. 000. So that depends on the uh, route where we are flying and all that. Okay? okay. Aircraft altitude, as I've just now told, the actual vertical distance above the sea level at which the aircraft flies. That's it. Cabin altitude. Cabin altitude is the cabin pressure corresponding to the equivalent altitude above the sea level. Well, uh, normally the cabin altitude in the aircraft is around 
5,000 to 8,000 feet or 6,000 to 8,000 feet. Now, this is a little uh, different thing because uh, it actually corresponds to the cabin pressure, which is maintained in the cabin or developed in the cabin, and uh, which is equivalent to the altitude above the sea level. So, don't just get confused with the, uh, on it. In case you have not understood, please let me know. Okay. Can you uh, repeat that one? Cabin altitude. Cabin altitude. It is corresponding to the cabin pressure. Remember that. Oh, okay. The cabin pressure is the pressure which is being maintained within the cabin in order to uh, sustain a normal breathing atmosphere within the cabin. So that cabin pressure corresponding to the altitude, the equivalent altitude of the aircraft from the mean sea level. So that is the cabin. Altitude. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the differential pressure? Differential pressure, the it's the difference between the pressure inside and outside. Inside and outside. Okay. So, okay. Elevation, very easy. Vertical distance of a point or level affixed to the surface of the earth measured from the mean sea level. Elevation. Remember that apart from height, everything which we are talking about it is measured from the mean sea level. Hmm. In case of this, okay. Okay. Now you see this pressurization system on the screen. Oh, yeah. It's the creation, the creation of an artificial atmosphere within the cabin for the safety and comfort of the passenger and crew at high altitudes is known as pressurization. As I've already told you, the cabin altitude is normally six to eight thousand feet. Okay. Six thousand to eight thousand feet. Now, how? What? What is this talking about? Within the aircraft, that we uh, normal people, when we fly in the aircraft, the crew, the passengers, the flight crew, everyone. How do we breathe in the aircraft? When we know that high altitudes, the oxygen level is very less, and the molecules go down. Still, we are able to breathe. So, the aircraft is built in such a way that. It actually creates an artificial atmosphere in the aircraft so that we all humans are, uh, you know, capable of, uh, you know, like walking, talking, and breathing. Each and every we are capable of doing normal work. So hmm. we are normal at such high altitudes also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the cabin altitude is uh, maintained at six thousand to eight thousand feet. Now, what does this mean? This means that the artificial atmosphere which is being created in the aircraft is equivalent to the 6,000 to 8,000 feet in the ground because to 6,000 to 8,000 feet uh, the humans can breathe normally mm -hmm. they are normal they can carry their own daily routine normally and that's how they have maintained this particular feet atmosphere within the cabin i hope you've understood but yes. i mean I'll show you the video also, and please do let me know if this video works also. Okay. <laughs> because I hope that I have. Uh, uh, up uh, to uh, um, more than eight thousand feet, so it takes air from the engine and uh, it makes the pressurization to control the breath of the passengers. It cause uh, at upper atmosphere the molecules will be right, not packed tightly, so uh, it will get the air from the engine, hot air from the engine, and uh, makes him uh, into the cabin to yes. maintain the pressurization. Yes. So you have understood the concept why mm. the pressurization is uh, why an artificial atmosphere is crucial to be created within the cabin uh, yeah, so yeah. that uh, it can fly because the oxygen molecules at the higher altitudes you you must have heard and you must have watched and you must have studied about it that at higher altitudes the oxygen molecules becomes less and mm. when uh, somebody uh, climbed the mountain at high altitude it is very difficult for us to breathe right properly yeah, 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 so that's yeah. the reason why they have actually taken this six six thousand to eight thousand feet atmosphere where humans can breathe normally and uh, carry out their normal activities. So uh, that's the reason why this particular uh, artificial atmosphere is being created in the cabin in order for the humans to carry out their normal work. And that's the reason why we can breathe, we can 
we drink water, we can eat, we can talk, we can think, all these things. But in any case, if this pressurization fails, and how does this pressurization fail? Um, if there is a crack in the uh, aircraft uh, structure, or if the uh, a large amount of you know large uh, aircraft structure gets blown away, or there is some technical uh, problem in the aircraft, then the pressurization is completely disturbed and it fails. Due to which, at high altitude, for the uh, humans or the passengers, for us, it is very difficult to breathe, and that's the reason why the captain. There's one. A uh, very um, important step which should be taken by the captain is that he has to descend the plane to a safe point where the, the outer and the inner uh, pressure will be the same or equal. Okay. Exactly, equal. So that the humans can breathe normally. And that is not around uh, 10,000 feet or less than that. Okay. okay so. This is this is why pressurization is required. Now, uh, let's talk about doors of the aircraft. Okay. okay. And the door that you see right now in front of you on the screen is the Airbus A Airbus A three hundred family door. It can be A three thirty. It can be A three forty. It can be A three twenty. So. Uh, this is the Airbus door, which you see right here on the screen. You can see that? Yeah, I can see. Okay. So, let me tell you about the, uh, you know, the features of the door. Uh, and for a cabin crew, it is very, very important to know about the features of the door because uh, if you can see my cursor moving, do you see yeah, where the cursor is see. being placed? Yeah, yeah, it's on yeah. placed on the seat. seat. Now, this seat is the cabin crew seat where the cabin crew sit and we uh, call it as a jump seat, okay? Literally jump seat because the seat, when you pull it down here and the cabin crew sit in, and when the cabin crew gets up, it he releases to the okay. cabin, then the seat goes back. It jumps back to its original position okay. and gets flushed with the seat okay. structure. So this is why we call it as jump seat. It is spring loaded, first of all, okay? Okay. So now let's talk about the specification of the door. Mm -hmm. Do you see this handle? This handle yes. Yes. right next to the seat. Yeah. This is known as control handle. Control. Okay. Which is attached to the door frame handle. This is the frame of the door. This is the door frame handle. Okay. Okay, because uh, the fr once first the frame is made. And then the door is being fixed. So this is the door frame handle, this one. Then the door is being fixed here. Now this is the door frame. Uh, this one is the door frame assist handle, and this is the door control handle. That one door is the door frame handle. Ah, door frame handle. Yeah. And why do we call it as assist handle? Because it assists us to hold it and then uh, open the door. Okay. Okay. That's why we call it as door frame assist handle. Why should it assist? Uh, it assists us oh. in the door. So we hold this. We hold this uh, mm. with one hand. We yeah. hold this, and then on yeah. the other hand, on the other hand, we open. Yeah. So now, I see this. Okay. Understood. So mm. now uh, this is the door control handle because this handle is right on the door, so it's door control handle. And uh, after that. Um, this is also the uh, you know door handle which we actually uh, move it up to open okay. the door. Okay, we move it up. This is the Airbus doors we are I'm talking about. So, okay. So we move this door control handle up to open the door. Uh, this red flag which you see it is uh, required. It is the red flag for the arming and disarming of the door. And what is arming and what is disarming we will be discussing right now. No. And. Uh, this one which you see, this big box which you see, mm. this is the slide packed and attached with the door. Okay. Okay. And this is the pressure gauge. Pressure. This is the pressure gauge. Pressure gauge of the slide. Why is this pressure gauge for? So to check that if the uh, pressure gauge needle is in the green zone. And if the pressure gauge needle is in the green zone, that means the slide is 
ready to go, the door is good to go. Because the slide which is packed here, okay. here, it is required in case of an emergency. In case if there is an emergency, when the door is opened in the emergency mode, which is an armed mode, then the slide will inflate, like it will open, which okay. is required so that when the slide opens, the passenger and the crew can go down and slide down the slide and go down and evacuate the aircraft or leave the aircraft. Okay. okay. All these terms which I'm speaking, you will get to know in some time. Okay. I, I'm just here to show the features of the door. Now okay. here, do you see this? This is the phone, the interphone, which is being used by the cabin crew in order to communicate with the captain and the other cabin crew members. Okay. 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 This is the um, uh, the indication. Uh, it's a kind of communication where the indication comes that who is calling and, and which passenger is calling and all that. We will we'll see this in detail. However, this is only been uh, uh, been given you on you know, the training when you will uh, join our airline. So this was okay. required. However, these were the features of the door. Okay. okay. Anything you have not understood, please let me know. No. Like okay, uh, then, this yes. uh, pressure gauge uh, is engaged with uh, like uh, that. Uh, you said that. Uh, uh, that sloping, uh, I uh, what's that name? Uh, like it's slide. Really, it's a slide. slide. Okay. Like uh, uh, whenever there's an emergency, it will uh, blow, right? Uh, and it will uh, it will be sliding down uh, so that uh, the passenger can uh, evacuate. Yes, it, okay, it will okay. open. It will open and it will touch the ground and so the ground. that the passenger can sit on it and slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And leave the aircraft. Okay. okay. So now there is also one more thing which I have forgotten to tell you. So do you see this where my cursor is moving? Yeah. Okay. What is this? What what kind of thing do you see? I will tell you what is its name and why is it used for. But tell me what is this? What what do you see here? Like it was a flag there, and but uh, I can't able to see it. This is a white color small thing. Yeah, it was in work. It's a, it's a white color small thing. It's known as dust lock. And uh, you just have to press in order to open or close the door. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, here I'm going to show you uh, the another feature of the aircraft. This is the yeah, observation window. Okay, so okay. This is the observation window. Pressure gauge was different. Pressure okay. gauge is this one. I'm, talk I'm talking about this one. Now okay. this is the uh, the uh, clear overview of it. This is on the next slide. We are talking about. So this is the observation window where the cabin crew looks out from the door to see in case if there is no fire, no emergency condition, and what's happening outside, um, anything. So this is required to see the outside conditions. So that's why it is known as observation window because we observe the outside condition before opening the door, right? Whether in normal or uh, in emergency condition. Okay. Now, do you see these two things here? One is yeah. this. It's written here cabin pressure. There is this little cabin pressure. Okay. This is cabin pressure warning light. Warning light. Okay. Cabin pressure warning light is uh, uh, it is used uh, to have a check while opening the door. Like when you when you lift this control handle up while opening the door, you need to have an eye on this. Okay, cabin pressure warning light. Why? As the name suggests, cabin pressure warning light. It gives the warning of the cabin pressure. In case if it uh, starts to flash red, that means you should not open the door. You must keep the handle down, store the handle down, and you need to inform this to your supervisor or the captain in order then she will inform the captain. Captain will actually try to 
uh, reduce that, I mean, uh, work on that cabin pressure. Then when the cabin pressure is gone and definitely how is that being done, they normally open the cockpit window in order to uh, regulate that pressure. And then when the pressure is regulated, then you go ahead and keep opening the door and you need to have an eye on this in case if it is, uh, uh, you know, it should must not flash red, then you go ahead and open it. So this is why cabin pressure warning light is necessary and that's the reason why it is right here given on the board. Okay. Can you, uh, can you repeat this again? <laughs> okay. There is a cabin pressure always in the cabin as I've already told you. Yeah. Right. So in any case, if the pressure, uh, the cabin is pressurized too much and you're trying to open uh -huh. the door in normal condition. Okay. And the cabin pressure warning light, which you see right there uh, in front of the observation window, if it starts to flash red, then you must not open the door because this is going to affect the aircraft. Okay, so you must not open the door. You need to inform the captain. And the captain will try to regulate the cabin pressure by opening the flight deck window. And they know best how to regulate the pressure. They have their own ways. So okay. after he has done his work, he will inform and then he can go ahead and open the door. So uh, in flight, the uh, pilot is supposed to open the cockpit door in flight. Is that no, a... this is this is not in flight I'm talking about. When you oh. open the door, you open the door on ground. So I'm talking about opening the door on ground. Okay. okay. So and before they... take off uh, the cabin pressure and all, it will be set. Okay. So they have yeah. to say, uh, okay, okay. See, all these uh, details are being already checked by the captain. But I'm talking about when you open the door and the aircraft is on ground. For example, the aircraft has landed, they have come to a complete stop. And now it is uh, now that we have to open the door because we have got the clearance from the ground staff that it is okay to open the door. And the cabin crew goes ahead and try to open the door. So while opening the door, during that uh, you know process, if you see that the cabin pressure warning light is illuminating red, in that case you have to stop and do not open the door and inform the captain. And captain will do something to regulate the pressure. After okay. he has done his work, he will inform back to you, and then you can open. Okay. Yes, okay. You understand that? Hmm. Because opening the door in a pressurized cabin, even if it is on ground, it is not good. Okay. It is going to create a, you have a, a some kind of emergency. So it's better you do not do it. Now, there is another warning light here. You see this flat thing? Oh, yeah. This is slide armed warning light. Hmm. Okay. Slide armed warning light is also, I mean, uh, the same thing that it will start to illuminate white. What will happen when you try to open the door, your eyes should be on the cabin pressure as well as the slide down warning light, both. In, in case if the slide down warning light starts to illuminate white, starts to flash white, if you, it has opened, you know, it has, it is white now, you must stop opening the door. And in that case, what you need to do, you keep back the handle, you go ahead and you arm the door. Now, what is arming and disarming? I'll show you in, uh, in a while. Okay. So you will arm the door, so you will disarm the door, and then you will again start opening. You need to have an eye because if you actually open the door in that mode that the slide arm morning light is illuminating white, then the slide will inflate on ground which mm. is uh, yes okay. and we, why do we have slide we have slide for emergency, emergency. Okay. Okay. we do not have slide for normal use because slides are very very expensive and mm. let me tell you this that in every airline if the cabin crew opens the door in armed mode and the slide illuminates in normal conditions then the cabin crew will lose these of our job and they get terminated. Why? Because the slide draft is of like it's very uh, expensive, like very, very expensive. Also that uh, in the normal mode, if this comes out, there's a ground staff out standing. There's okay. a bus out standing. There's an aero bridge out standing. So they will get hurt. So all these things are being keep in mind. So you need to be very, very mindful while you open the door. 
And for camel toe, it is much more required. Why? Because they fly a lot, they get jet lag a lot, and they need to be very mindful while opening the door. So these are the two things you need to keep in mind always. Okay. So let's go ahead. Now, do you see this picture here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yellow pack. Yeah. Now this is the slide. Okay. This is the slide which is attached with the now. Now why I'm showing this because see it is open. Uh, this the uh, you know, that the cover is open so that I can show you the slide. This is how the slide is packed with the door, and this is the pressure gauge which you see from outside up. This is the pressure gauge because when the door, when the cover will go up, the pressure gauge will be shown there. See, I'll show you this. You see this? Yes, yes. So this is how it is, and then this is how it is. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. Well, let's move ahead. Hmm. Yeah. This is how the slide will inflate from the door, uh -huh. right down. Okay. And the passengers will slide down the slide sitting on it or jumping on the slide. Do you understand? Any yeah, doubts yeah. ask me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the crew, all the flight crew, all the passengers will use this slide to slide down the uh, slide down towards the ground and leave the aircraft. Hmm. Okay. And remember during an emergency anywhere, be it the be the aircraft has been crash landed on water or be the aircraft has crash landed on ground. You just have 90 seconds. I mean, cabin crew uh, have 90 seconds to evacuate the aircraft. Evacuate is a term which is used to leave the aircraft in case of an emergency. emergency. Because in normal condition, we only say leave the aircraft. We do not say evacuate the aircraft. Evacuate is only used in case of an emergency. So you just, just have 90 seconds. Otherwise, the aircraft will blow away with the flash fire or something like that. So it's better you just have 90 seconds. You have to be very, very quick. Okay, now, now I'm going to show you what is arming and disarming and why do we arm and disarm the door. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to play this video. Please do let me know if you have heard this video very carefully or not. And okay, 10 minutes, okay. because this is uh, 10 minutes late. So hmm. that's why I'm just uh, showing you this one. Please watch this carefully. Okay. And then, uh, Can you hear that properly? See that yeah, properly? yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can.